This might be a bit gruesome viewing, so if you're having your tea, turn off now. What the hell is that? Power arm 5860. Squeeze getting out of here today, I don't know if I'm gonna make it. Jeez, flipping heck. Morning, Holly. There we are, we cami. Ah, you bad. Good morning. Good morning. Fed them, I need to go and check the cows and the calves. Sunflower update, they're doing pretty well. Got a fair bit of size to them now. Fairly thick through the field. Bit where the tulips were. It is coming, but crows have been pretty harsh on it. Basically, the crows have nicked the first set of leaves and those two wee leaves in the middle, that's the regrowth coming. I'm hoping they'll bounce back and be all right. Car park update, there's the car park. Still to get packed in with a roller and it's to get planings and whatnot to finish it off, make a nice finish to it. Nice soak away drain in there um, with a mound of grass, so we need to go and sow that with grass so we can get in with a lawnmower and make that nice and tidy and neaten it all up. And then this is the driveway. This is where the new entrance will be. This is the roadway. I'll try and draw a diagram of our old entrance. So the main road goes like this and it kind of comes in a wee bit and then pushes out again. So our old entrance is kind of here. You can see that way, but it's really difficult to see that way. So it's not that good an entrance. So we put this new entrance on just to divert the traffic and the customers via a much safer entrance. It now juts out the other way. The new entrance, so this is the road now and the new entrance is here. So you come out here and you can see really well that way, really well that way. So much safer. We've got more capacity for car parking space. You can get the gist of it. That's where the entrance is gonna be. Road comes down here, swings around there, and then that's the car park in there. It's feed hens time again. Okay, people have been asking what we feed our hens. So it's a mix of wheat. You can see the wheat through it there. There's a bit of wheat. Limestone, the wee black bits, they're limestone. Limestone provides calcium, which provides shell strength. And then there's soya through it as well. So that's more yellowy. So there's a bit right in the middle of the screen right now. There's mineral oil through it all to provide minerals, obviously. Um, and it also kind of binds it together and makes it less dusty. And that's what's in our hen feed. Quick run around the cows on this yard to see how they're doing. Still got two to calf. This one. Uh, still not making any progress, not bagging up. Looks like she's in calf anyway. And this wee black one. Come on. There's a the big man. Big boy. He seems a lot calmer now he's out in the field. He's chasing tail. Hey Doug. Squeeze getting out of here today. I don't know if I'm gonna make it. Jeez, flipping heck. I've made it. I've made it. Kev's just got the hedge cutter on. He's doing some verges. You're not allowed to do hedges at this time of year. Although there's one bit of hedge he is doing because um, coming out the shop entrance, it makes it a lot safer viewing wise. There's a few relief reasons why you are allowed to cut hedges at this time of year, which is safety and something else. Right, we're off. We'll get these oats finished. One tank full to do on the oats. Might then head to yard number three where there's some wheat to spray. Just had a phone call as well from lorry driver. So there's fertilizer, polysulfate, another load arriving just in half an hour. So Kev's gonna grab the forklift and away and unload that. Monday's video, some of you will have tried to watch it and then it went down. Basically, I took it off because I was showing the cow's hoof. I was taking a bandage off and it was quite gory. YouTube basically flagged it and it wasn't gonna to get to everyone. So I've taken it down. I'm gonna either blur that bit or cut that bit. But anyway, just unfolding the booms here. Last tank to do on the oats. Lift that up and avoid that pile of dung. So you can see where I left off yesterday. Green is done and sprayed. Clear is still to do, so in this tramway. There we go, stats for this tank, 180 litres per hectare we're going on at. There's 3,100 litres in the tank at the moment. Flow rate, 77-ish litres per minute. We've been able to spray via the poles in this, this field, so just a wee nudge, keep moving. Not only you don't have to fold in the booms and mess about with that, but you get spray around about the pole. Um, it's quite often if you've got a pole in the middle of a tram line, you come up to it, you fold in, and basically there's a straight streak right where the pole is, the width of the boom, that doesn't get any spray. Number two. And then there's three and four. And then you go the other direction, past them all again. 
Okay, that's that field done. The station field, here it is. Now we're going to the foam box field, which is this one. Then that's all the spring oats done, and then onto some wheat. Right in a point of a field right now. To get as much done as possible, you can manually move uh, the steering axle on this. So I've, I've basically steered myself as close to getting all of it as I can, which is about there. It's quite handy being able to do that. You get most of it. Here you can see a picture of that point I'm trying to spare right now. Someone else getting a load of fertilizer. That's not what we are getting. Ours are the wee stout bags of polysulfate, the dense, dense stuff. That'll be ammonium nitrate probably. Either that or some NP and K or things like that. Won't be urea, won't be polysulfate. Urea's massive bags, polysulfate's tiny bags. That's something in between. The odd occasion when you're staring backwards after you think you've pressed the auto guidance button. Oops a daisy. I say odd occasion. Regular occurrence. This is the one pole in this field, which is fine. You can see exactly the seam between that side got ploughed um, in the back end and this got ploughed just a few weeks before it got sown. We've had this two years now, I think. Good purchase. What is it, McConnell? What's the model of it? Power Arm 5860. Get on well with it. The only issues we'd, we've had with this is the mounting system. A while back, there is a video on we, we managed to shear the top block um, on the spools there because there's a point right there. Basically, there's a knuckle there and that knuckle came up, hit that um, return and sheared the whole block here, which was really annoying. A bit annoying as well because it went away to get fitted up onto the tractor. We didn't fit it ourselves. So and the fact it was fitted with an interference bit annoying but anyway we changed it about and now it doesn't interfere so shouldn't happen again perfect job for through the winter if you run out of jobs to do it's, it fills a hole you're sitting in a cab you're not out in the miserable cold if we were getting a lot of hedges cut and it's not cheap to get them cut so it will pay itself off over the next few years what the hell is that flying really low someone will know put it down below look how low that is there you go, there the flails go. Right, away along to yard number three to spray some wheat. I've got my GoPro on top of the tractor, so cut to that. First field of wheat, this one, 17 hectares. I'm just about finished it actually. And then I'm heading over to this field, the school field, it's 25 hectares. Mainly spraying to control septoria uh, on this wheat. There we go, last wee strip up here. Right, we're off. Heading away from yard number three now, off to yard number four, which is just over that wee hill. Right, we're about halfway over this field. Fairly nice field to spray. There's a wee corner in there and it's a wee bit not tricky, but it's just a bit more hilly and awkward. But the rest of it's pretty nice long rounds. It's looking a bit dark over there. That shouldn't come our way. Should just keep going over there. Oh, it's getting closer. We've got spots of rain. Oh no. Literally just got to get to that fence line. We've made it. Last wee streak. Job's done. Just in time. We spit as a rain, but it's not going to be heavy, I don't think, for a wee bit, like, so give it a time to dry. We made it! Missed the rain, just, it was threatening, you can see. You can see my wheel arches are a wee bit wet. Should be fine, it's on now, not much we can do about it now. That's everything caught up with now, apart from a wee slim bit of wheat, which I actually just forgot about. I'll add in the Monday's video that I took down. Before we cut to that, if you can like the video, subscribe to the channel as well. Um, we're coming up on 7,000. Also, Scotland are playing Ukraine tonight. You'll know the outcome by now, but... It's a bit of a tricky one. Scotland are the only country in the world that want to beat Ukraine tonight. Everyone else will be rooting for Ukraine. It's a moral dilemma, that. Anyway, hopefully we won. Video. So that's the tractor signed on the dotted line. He's feeling lively. There we go, that's all the hens in now. Effectively going to get like a post-mortem. This might be a bit gruesome viewing, so if you're having your tea, 
turn off now. Morning, Holly. There we are, we can. Ah, you bandit. Morning, I've been around everything this morning, I'm not sure any of that, but I've got the cow with a sore foot needing her hoof rebandaged. Looking forward to the car park being finished and then the gates won't be blocked. <laughs> Get her into the race, get bandaged up. This might be a bit gruesome viewing, so if you're having your tea, turn off now. Oh, lovely. Basically, to give it a leather and blue spray. It, it might. There's a bucket with all, all sorts of tapes. Hello. How you doing? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what? Well, I'll just be here in 10 minutes. That was a phone call there. Hamilton Group coming out and um, signed some papers for the new fence. Progress. Job done. So that's her all rebandaged, nice and cleaned up. Didn't look too pretty when it came off, but that's the way it goes. There is more bandages left, so I might in a few days' time just do that again. Right, we'll get her and calf loaded back up. They quite enjoy going into the trailer. Come on. Oh, I say that. Come on. Also, what a difference this crush has made to being able to handle cattle properly. That's great. Access in the back from both sides. Um, runners along here for the bars to push push the cattle up and uh, roller and strap down here to lift legs up and oh it's brilliant love it it's not an all singing all dancing but it is class total game changer for us this she goes Rory who sold us the fence um, from not Reekies anymore Hamilton Group anyway he was out to get us to sign some documents so that's the tractor signed on the dotted line hopefully not far away it's apparently definitely finished completed just sitting waiting to be put on a lorry so we're not far away so a wee bit of a change of plan so our new hens came in and in the opposite shed the hens are about seven months old maybe six seven months and we've had two or three die kind of like a bit of a prolapse type situation we've had that symptom before clocked it quite early so i've got three dead hens bagged them up and they're basically going down to a veterinary service down near edinburgh it's about an hour's drive from here effectively going to get like a post-mortem to check whether it's the same thing because we can put medicine into their water system hopefully we've caught this early we're going to pick up the medicine anyway and then they're going to test it but seems similar to last time I've been going round and round and round in circles trying to find this poultry vet. Anyway, I found it, so I'm going to go and grab the hens that are in the car. It's actually Edinburgh U University campus as well. It's a lot of it's tied to the university. Anyway, let's go carry a bag of hens through the university. I'm notoriously shocking at directions, but this is a minefield of a place. There we go. Got some medicine, dropped off the samples. Took me probably half an hour longer than it should have. Hey, boy. Lively. Oh, he's getting excited. Leave him be. Get on fire, Hank. Crows have been a wee bit of a pest on this wee patch we sowed later on the sunflowers. We bandits, these crows. Nicked sunflower. Nicked sunflower. That one's been nicked a wee bit. Regrowth is coming. Ah, hate the crows. Nicked sunflower. Nicked sunflower. They've just obliterated this patch here. Ugh. I changed the banger settings a wee bit. I upped the banger rate. It doesn't seem to be working now. So I'll chuck the battery on charge overnight and then set up in the morning just that'll eliminate the battery being the issue. This evening's entertainment. Wait for the light to sort itself out. Those things, those flipping things. The guy who's got these sheep and um, put them into a pen because he was to doze them and he never got around to dozing them. 
he's wearing a stag doing forgot about it so i'll just open the gate and let them back into the field because they're dense in the field they're dying to get out so. i wish i was on the stag do there they go go on through the gap come on they're coming now they're happy to get out of here anyway a bit more grass keep moving keep moving come on Weesh. that'll do them not my problem anymore that's enough sheep activity for a couple of months i think just been yoking this tractor up to the sprayer because I've got spraying to do in the morning. It's to be a good day tomorrow. Quite windy today, but it's to be calm tomorrow. So cut straight to it tomorrow morning. Right, good morning. Off to spray some wheat with... Oh, what am I spraying today? What am I spraying today? A fungicide spray today on some sake. That's the variety of wheat. We do have other wheat called Xtase, it's a different variety, KWS Xtase, and it's actually a lot cleaner, so it's not gonna need to get um, this treatment that the sake's getting. Also, one of the chemicals, um, Univoc, that's in the tank right now, been informed it's been messing with sprayers, um, so it eats away at O-rings and seals and whatnot, so need to be really careful with it, make sure and clean out really well, avoid leaving chemical in the tank, make sure all the lines are flushed out, Make sure you've got plenty of water volume going on to be more diluted when it's in the tank. Just keep on top of it because it'll eat away and just make a right mess of the spare apparently. Which is the main chemical in Univoc. Univoc's just the name of the, the makeup of what's in the jug. But the chemical that's causing the issues it, is in, intra, Intravec. Intravec? Innov... In... Oh... In... in, in a, what did I just say? I just said it. In a trek. So clean, clean, clean. You can cover a lot of ground quickly when you've got a big long straight like that, a kilometre long. And it's flat. I mean, there's zero adjustment needed in the boom. Just sails on. Flat going that way, flat going that way. Long and straight. Oh, lovely field. Corker. You can clearly see all the barley now in the oats. There's absolutely loads. Uh, yeah, totally unrogable. Not sure why there was barley in that field two years ago, so they've come up again from two years ago. It's just loads of them, loads. Anyway, it's failed as a seed crop. We've managed to salvage 25 acres. That was rogable. Still needs roped a couple times again, but that is a total mess. We check out here on the calves and the cows and the bull. Quite happy so far with Percy's calves. Hey, you. Hey, come here. Come on. So that's an Angus, Angus there. That's a Charlie there off of Percy. And the difference in age between those two will be about a month and a half. I'll check, I'll, I'll put it down in this corner what it actually is. And a half, I'll check. Update on the hens. So the hens are all in and I've forgotten actually to show you the hens being in. There we go, that's all the hens in now. So not yet laying. Um, there'll just be a couple of eggs here and there just now. It'll take four or five weeks for them to ramp up and get up to fully laying. At this stage, they don't get let out yet. A few more weeks time, and then we'll start letting them out into the field. And they can tear about out there and come back in, lay their eggs. So they're all doing well just now. I've just turned the lights on because I need to just go and run the feeder and make sure it fills up the feed because it's been a wee bit tricky to start with again, making sure it's running without. There's a wee shear pin on the motor over there and a cog. Don't want it to shear. So the first few days, we just manually turn it off and on. And then, once we know it's definitely running fine, we'll leave it on auto and it runs twice a day, fills up the feeders twice a day. So there we go, you can hear the feeders running now. There we go. Nice feed that. So that'll keep them going. Doing this twice a day. So these tracks just run the width of the shed, so there's two separate tracks. One goes up and round, back down and in there. And another one, the inside one here, goes up loops back round, goes all the way down there, across the bottom there and does the same on the other side. Then comes back round to the motor. And then in there, so that's a wee popper of feed, it's got a wee sensor in it. And when the feed level drops below the sensor, that motor turns on and there's an auger that goes out there to the silo which is outside. So that'll draw up feed, keep that hopper full. So when the chain's drawn through the hopper, it can draw out feed. 